praises to him. Our God in heaven, we thank you for bringing us all together here, for bringing us safely. We ask you to bless the service, to bless Pastor Davis and the message that he's bringing to us. We ask you for a humble spirit, for us to receive this message humbly, to attend to it, to live by it. And uh, we ask you all also for all of those that are listening online, watching online, to bless them, to bless, to bless every one of us here today. Um, our reading today comes from Psalm 23.
God. He is God all by himself. He is God. Hallelujah. Do you know him as God? There's no one like him. No one elected him to be God. No one selected him to be God. He wasn't voted in as God. He always has been God, and he always will be God. He is the mighty God. He is awesome. He is the awesome, the amazing, the amazing God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for, for who he is and what he's already done. We thank God for who he is. If you can't find anything in your life to thank him for, just thank him for who he is. If, you, if he hadn't done anything in your life, just thank him for, for who he is. But I know better than that. Because you're still here, he's giving you grace and he's giving you mercy. Just to lift your hands one more time. Just to say hallelujah one more time. Just to praise him one more time. He is the awesome and the mighty God. Our lesson for today will be found in Micah chapter 6. In the Old Testament, the book is Micah. If you're having trouble finding it, look at the front of the book. It's called Table of Contents. Micah, Micah chapter 6, Micah chapter 6. Why don't we thank God for Sophia? Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you for, for blessing our hearts. Thank you for being the maestro right here. Thank you so much. We, uh, we thank God for her determination to be a church musician. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. Micah chapter 6. One verse, one verse, verse number eight. In the Old Testament, the book is Micah, chapter six, verse number eight. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Micah chapter six, verse number eight. You found it, you will discover these words. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly before your God? I want to talk about court is in session. Court is in session. I said court is in session. The honorable judge God is the providing officer. As we look today in Madison, Wisconsin, we find coming to the end the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse, a young man at the age of 17 who decided that he would go among a bunch of protesters and set the record straight. He made his own decision, his own mind. I don't know if his mama had influence on him then, but now she's trying to have influence in the midst of the trial, and she has even contested the president of the United States. Kyle Rittenhouse, back in August of 2020, found himself in the midst of protesters where he had traveled many miles just to be there. He declares that he was coming to make sure that the looters and the rioters stopped burning up the place. He declares that he came to Kenosha, Wisconsin to make sure that people did no longer carry out like they were acting. At age 17, he made his own decision, young people. And he moved from one place to the other with a high power rifle. He came to set the record straight. At 17 years old, we ought to have some control over our children. Right. At 17 years old, we ought to still be able to give our children instructions and they follow those instructions. <laughs> but Kyle Rittenhouse took it upon himself to join in with police officers everywhere. He took it upon himself to license himself, to put on a uniform similar to those he, he was standing on beside. 
In the midst of the chaos, he was confronted, he says, or, or he confronted three men. These three men, he reports that he had to protect himself from them. Now, first of all, my child, I want to know from you, why are you here? You have no law degree. You're not employed by any police department. You're not even a National Guard. But at 17, Kyle Rittenhouse decided he would go down to Kenosha, Wisconsin in August of 2020 to set the record straight that y'all need to stop this. And if you don't, I'm carrying a high power rifle. And I'm going to set the record straight because I'm strapped. As the trial proceeded, and, and, and Judge Bruce Strada, he takes on the case, and he is biased. Yes, he is. Judge Strada declares that he's going to enact some things, and as a judge, he has the right to. But it's, it is quite obvious as you watch these proceedings throughout the court, it is obvious that he's trying to paint the picture of those who were killed as rioters and, and as those who were tearing up stuff. And he's trying to paint the picture that they deserve to die. Mm -hmm. While this now 18-year-old walks God free. He, he, he has set it up. He, he has set the case up for this boy. He, he has laid it all out. He, he's making sure that he found, he's found not guilty. He's attacked prosecution several times, and he has disciplined them in the court because Kyle Rittenhouse has killed two and wounded one. Now, if the table was turned, if the situation was just a little different, if, if the pigmentation had been altered just a little bit, you would have been arrested on the scene and, and, and police officers and, and, and those who were guards would not have given you a drink of water. I saw it live, I saw it in color where they gave him a drink of water and told him, we are so glad you're here. It's a sad day when National Guards and police officers cannot hold the peace down without a 17-year-old coming to help them out. It's a sad day in America when we have judges that are unfair and unjust judges. But the Bible shows us that the book is coming to an end. The Bible shows us clearly that the world is coming to a close. The Bible shows us clearly that Jesus, the good news, Jesus, the good news is Jesus is coming back again. And Jesus is coming to get a church without a spot or a ring. Yes, this is an unjust judge. And he needs to be called out as unjust. But when we look at Micah chapter 6, we find the true and the living judge. In Micah chapter 6, the court is in session. In Michael chapter 6, God himself is the judge. And there's no judge like our judge. Our judge, God himself, has the final answer. Our judge is a fair judge. He is no respecter of person. Our judge, God himself, he has, he has called the court to session in Michael chapter 6. And he tells these who are his chosen covenant people, Israel, that, that you are, have an indictment brought against you. An indictment, a charge for doing wrong. An indictment, a charge for misusing your power. An indictment, a charge for you not obeying the judge himself. The Israelites were just like those of us who live now. They like God as long as God is taking care of them. They reside with God. They understand God. They approve God as long as God is blessing them. But the moment God stopped blessing them, then they turn back to their evil ways. You don't know anybody like that, do you? The Israelites had a way of being blessed by God and then turning around and, and throw away their blessings. In the country, they were saying, you get a good, good pail of milk and you mess right around and kick it over. Young people, you get that, ask somebody that's over 50, they'll tell you what it's all about. We need to understand that the God we have is God today, yesterday, and he never changes. 
The God that we have is such an awesome God that he gives us mercy when we don't deserve it. The God that we have, he gives us grace and we can't even touch it. I'm telling you, we serve the awesome and the amazing God. He is God all by himself. This God that we serve, he is righteous, he is holy, he is filled with righteousness, and he commands that which is right. And the God we have, we understand that one day he will take full control. It looks like, when we, when we see it, Brother Miles did an excellent job this morning when he said that evil is looking like it's in a prevailing mode. It looks like that evil is on the run and righteousness is running away. It looks like that evil is tracking this world and evil is running things all around us. But just keep waiting on just a little while longer. Just hang in there. Sooner or later, God is going to set the record straight. It looks like those who, who are doing evil, those who are not doing what's right, they are prospering in their wrong. It looks like, it looks like that God has, has forgotten about us. And some of you have come to the conclusion that the God we serve has forgotten about us. We've come to the conclusion that the God that sits high and looks low has closed his eyes to us. But I say to you this morning, my dear, keep praying. Keep right on fasting. Keep walking with the Lord because God is going to set the record straight one day. And I dare tell you, he's going to do it soon and it won't be long. God is going to set the record straight. So here it is. God brings an indictment. He brings an indictment against his covenant people, Israel. And he says in, in verses 1 through 7, he says, rise up and plead your own case. <laughs> and he says to them, you don't need a lawyer. You don't need an attorney. You don't need somebody to represent you. You don't need counsel. What you need to do is stand up and plead your own case. He says, matter of fact, what you do is go to the mountains and plead your case. Because the foundations of the world, the mountain and the hills, also see that you are guilty. Yeah, they were guilty because they loved God one moment, they fall out with him the next. They, they, they like God one minute, and then they, they turn to Baal the next. They, they will be right with God one moment, and then they will be unrighteous before God. And, and can you identify he says, hear you mountains, the complaints of the Lord. Does God have any complaint against you? I want to testify this morning that God has a complaint against me. I haven't done it all right. I have, I have, I've been wrong. I've missed the mark. I've sinned. I've not done the things that are pleasing in the sight of God. And for that, God has an indictment against me. It's all about how you handle your indictment. It's all about how you carry out from that point on. Now let me tell you, if God calls you on in the courtroom, you better, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. You, if God calls you in the courtroom, if God gets your attention, if God tells you wrong, I don't have to tell you wrong. The, the deacons don't have to tell you wrong. People beside you, your friends don't have to tell you wrong. Matter of fact, you already know that you're wrong. I, I watch people, I watch people doing crazy stuff. Watch people doing ungodly stuff. I watch people going the same way. And I tell them every now and then that we're going to be having the same conversation five years from now. You know, the devil and God and now COVID are, are, are the three most lied on entities in the world. I mean, they are the three most lied on. Somebody said the devil made me do it. Somebody said God told me to do it. And somebody will say that COVID shut me down so I couldn't do it. But we need to understand that God is the God of truth. God is the God that, that sees everything. He is an omniscient God. He knows everything. He sees everything. He's an omnipotent God. He is all potent. He is all powerful. He is almighty. He's an omnipresent God. He's a God that's everywhere at the same time. But most of all, he's a sovereign God. He does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, to whom he chooses to do it, any way he chooses to do it. And I want to be on God's side in the courtroom. Amen. So he says to the children of Israel in Micah chapter 6, he says, I got a complaint against you, and this complaint is against my people. 
And he says that God will contend with you. Let me tell you, regardless of what folk are doing against you, just hang in there. God will contend with them. Regardless of how they, they backbite, regardless of how they lie to you, regardless of how people treat you, just hang in there. God will contend with them. Don't you get on their level. Don't you do what they do. Don't you act the way they act. Just hang in there because God has a way of contending with them that you can't contend with them. It's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Verse number three, he says, oh, my people, what have I done to you? God comes and he reasons with mankind. Thank God that we have a reasoning God. God comes and he reasons with, he says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, come now, let us reason together, and then I will wash your sins whiter than snow. God says, oh my people, what have I done to you? And, and how have I made you weary? And he welcomes us to testify against him. See, that's what people do. They want to bring God down to their level so they can testify against God. But let me tell you, when you be able to begin to testify and God is involved, you can't testify against him. You testify for him. And every test we go through can become our testimony if we walk with God, if we leap for God, if we are righteous for God, because God has a way of blessing us regardless of who we are. And the righteous are the ones that he's looking to bless. For the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth, trying to find, looking for somebody, searching for somebody who he can show himself mighty through. Can God show himself mighty through you? Oh, you have an attitude with God too. Because God didn't give you what you wanted. Because God didn't act the way you said he ought to act. Because God is not your bellhop. He's not your taxi driver. He's not your Uber and your Lyft driver. Because God has not done it the way you wanted to do. Now you have an attitude with God. Let me just share with you. God has a way of blessing us. Even in spite of us. Because we don't deserve to be here this morning. It's, uh, it's only because of God's amazing grace that we sit. It's only because of God's amazing grace that we slept. It's only because of God's amazing grace that none of us are, are still right now in our sin. It's because of God's grace. Therefore, we can't point our fingers at anybody else and while they're in the midst of their sin. We need to make sure that we understand that God was patient with us. And he kept us in our mess. Did he keep you in your mess? And, and the good thing about God, you can go and counsel with God, and they, he won't tell your secret like they will. Right. You know, and church folk, when you tell, you, you tell church folk their secret, they'll bow down in church, and they'll say, Lord, bless him as her boy has gone. Bless her as her boy has gone. And you told everybody your business. See, we tell business in the name of God. We, we tell other folks business because we want other folks to know what's going on. But the God we serve is a God that keeps our secrets regardless of what's going on around us. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the mighty God. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the everlasting Father. His name is Jesus. When we look at the text, we find, we find that God tells them to go to the mountains and, and stand before the mountains and plead your case. Uh, give the mountains your side of the story. The God we serve will allow us to even come before him and state our cases. He allows us to come before him and he gives us a chance to say whether we are right or wrong. And let me tell you, if you're called to court before God, you might as well tell the truth because God already knows. You, you might as well let loose. You always let loose. You always, you always ought to just tell the truth because the God we serve, He there's no searching of His understanding. He is God all by Himself, and He already knows. He's just given us an opportunity to testify that we're wrong and we've been wrong. He says, "Go, go plead your own case. Go, go plead your case. Don't, don't get somebody else to plead your case." Then He tells them about how he has blessed them. God says, I'm the innocent one in this matter. God says, you can say what you want, and he, he gives some rhetorical questions. What have I done to you? 
How has God wronged you? What God is saying is, is that we have a relationship. We, we, we were in fellowship. We have a relationship going on. We, we have this thing going on. The songwriter back home used to say it like, say it like this. And it wasn't a church song, so forgive me here. Uh, the, the songwriter would say, me and Mrs. Jones. I, I, I thought you knew it. I knew you could finish it. I, I knew you could finish it. Me and Mrs. Jones, it's terrible English, but you get the point. Me and Mrs. Jones got a thing going on. What God is saying, that you and me have a thing going on, and because you and I have a thing going on, we ought to all, all be able to walk together and love. You ought to be able to follow my instructions. If you got a relationship with God, you better cherish that relationship. If you're walking with God, God has blessed you with mercy and grace enough to walk with him. You better cherish every moment of it. Because the God we serve, he can shut it out. He can cut it off. He can, he can snuff us out in a matter of seconds. The God we serve is a God that can take life and give life. And we walk around here like we don't care about God. We, we, we say anything. We do anything. We act anyway. We, we clown anyway. We do anything we want to do. We, we carry ourselves anyway. And, and then we expect God to keep right on blessing us. And we have the nerve, the audacity of God to say to God, God bless us anyhow. God, you bless us, so bless us anyhow. God, go ahead and bless me good. And bless me anyhow, Lord. Let me tell you, God can't bless you any old how. He bless you in the midst of your righteousness. And whenever he gives us blessing while we're doing crazy things, I'm going to tell you, I testify today that I've been climbing up fool's hill. Will you testify today? I, I, I testify today that I have always, I'm not always done the right thing. I testify today that I've fallen short. And I, like Paul, every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. And sometimes I give in to that evil. But thank God for his mercy. God has given me another chance. And, and, and because he's given me another chance, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to stay with him. And I'm going to let allow him to lead me. Verse number six says, I'm sick and tired of your rituals. Verse number six through seven, he, he says real quickly, he said, look, I'm sick and tired of y'all. You, you going to church so you can check the box. You sing in the choir so you can check the box. You direct so you can check the box. You usher, you, you do things so you can check the boxes. You show up on time so you can check the boxes. God said, I'm sick and tired of your junk. He says, you have not given him your whole self. He, he says, with what shall I bring before the Lord? And bow myself before the high God. Shall I bring before him with, with, shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calf a year old? Will, will, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give him my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? He has shown you, O oh man, God personifies this nation of Israel. God gives Israel the characteristics of a person. God calls on every man in Israel. He says, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. Have God blessed you with anything? Has God been good to you? He has shown you what is good. He talks to them and he says that I brought you out of Egypt. He says, I redeemed you from the evil one. I brought you from the house of bondage. I have given you and brought before you Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. And then, then you got to remember, I moved you out of the house of Balaam, and I have brought you into a righteous stance before the Lord. You haven't always been like you are. You haven't always been who you are. And if you still who you were last year, you need to step it up a little bit. You need to walk with him. If, if the same thing bothered you this year that bothered you last year, after God brought you through COVID-19, man, you 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 about to wreck yourself. 
If you don't love God any more than you loved him in 2019, if you don't love God any more than you loved him in 2020, if you're not, you're not in a great fellowship with him and your fellowship is not growing day by day and God is not moving in your life any differently than he moved six months ago, you're in a bad state. God is moving. God didn't want everything to bother you. You shouldn't be falling out about every little thing. And now God says, I'm tired of your riches. I'm tired of what your, your little traditions. I'm, I'm tired of what you do. Because we think because we spent an hour to an hour and 15 minutes in church, we got it going on. We have the nerve to drive back in our neighborhood and say, look at them. They still at the house. They never went to church. Let me tell you, if you're just going to church to check the box, you're not doing any better than they are. When we come here, when we worship him, when we come into the presence of God, we didn't come to see who's with who. We didn't come to see who had on what. We didn't come to see whether the walls are still standing. We came to see the, the living God himself. And when we see him, we will be like Isaiah. We will see him high and lifted up. His train will fill the temple. We will see miracles take place if we come to see God. We ought to show up to see God. We ought to show up to see him. We, we, ought, we ought not to come to see if everybody made it. If, if we can see how many people showed up. We ought not come to, to even sing our song, do our prayers, read our scripture. We ought to come to meet with God. And if we come to meet with God, I guarantee you he will meet with us. And yeah, you're right. You don't have to come to the building to meet with him. But you got to do something with, with Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 says, forsake not the assembly of the brothers is coming together. I mean, some people, some people, I just, I just let you know right now. Some people just bothered me. Some people just pressured me. I, when are we going to get back in church? Why are we closed down this long? And they haven't shown up maybe once or twice. And then, and then one lady says, you know, people, people can always make the preacher promises when they're down and out. And the preacher's there for them. I went to a funeral and I supported the family. And when I left to check on them by calling later on, I said, Pastor Davis, when you when you get back in that building, we're gonna be there. We gonna pass it, baby. We've been back in the building since February. <laughs> Don't you see the background? Don't you see? <laughs> Don't you see the colors of the walls? Don't you see the baptism? We've been back since February. Where have you been? Matter of fact, come on, in that same two group of people, same two group, that's good English, the same two people have not shown up yet. People make you promises when they're going through. And I contend that they make God promises when they go through. Will you keep your promise with God? Court is in session. God has brought us a court. And God has an indictment against us. We are, we are, are accused and we are rightly accused. And God is the judge himself. Says to us, says to us, kind of your rituals. He declares to us that the fruit of our bodies is nothing if we don't have God. We can give ourselves to him, but if we don't give our whole selves to him, then we are just like tingling symbols. Sounding brass, we are accomplishing nothing. First of all, he says, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. Has God been good to you? Come on, don't fool me now. Ha has God really been good to you? Did, did you think it was your alarm clock that woke you up this morning? Did you think that it was honey nudging you saying, it's time to get up this morning? Did you think it was the slamming of the doors that, that woke you up this morning? Let me tell you, about 3 o'clock this morning, I heard a rapid fire going off. Bah, 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 bah. And I just laid there and said, Lord, have mercy. After that rapid fire went off, about two minutes later, bah, 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 God kept us all night long. Not a bullet came through the house. <laughs> there was not a person that we know that was injured. And let me tell you, if that's not enough for you to praise him, I've shown up this morning just to say, Lord, I thank you for a brand new day. A day that I didn't have to have, but you kept me. He blessed us. He, it says, oh man, what is good? What, what has God done good for you? And what does the Lord require of you? There are some requirements because God has been good. He, he lists three things. 
He lists three things. He says to act justly. He says to love mercy. And he says to walk humbly before your God. First of all, he says to act justly. This is a passage that, that the judge in Madison, Wisconsin, Brother Bruce Stoller needs to know. Because when he says be to act justly, he says to be fair. Yeah. You may not know all the ins and outs, but he says be fair. If you're born of the Lord, if you're saved by Jesus Christ, you ought to want to be fair. Yeah. If, if you love him, if, if you really, really love him, even if you don't like the person, be fair with the person. Even if you don't like what's going on around you, just be fair with the person. Be fair. He says be fair. He, he says be fair. And all of us who have eyes, all of us who have ears, know that he's not being fair. Two men are dead. One man injured. In a joke of walking the streets, and the police is of the street, the, the, the guards in the street welcome him, give him a bottle of water. But if the pigmentation had been different, if the pigmentation had been just a little darker, where would we be today? What would we be looking at today? When would the arrest have taken place? The Bible says be fair. And it says to this nation, you got to be fair. Late Dr. Martin Luther King says it like this, be true to what you put on paper. That all men are created equal. They're endowed with powers by their own creator. He says, be fair. Because one of these days, God is going to make the crooked places straight. Every hill and mole hill will be shut down and cut down. And God has a way of blessing us, so we need to be fair. Because the judge is watching us. Then he says, love mercy. Says to us that we need to meet the needs of others. We need to meet people where they are. We need to meet their needs. It's not the church responsibility to talk about those who are down and out. It's not the church responsibility to, to, to downgrade those who are down and out. It's not the church responsibility to kick people out. It's the church responsibility to love people in. And as we love people in, we have love, we have love as an action word. And love says to go on a missionary journey and feed the hungry. Love says go on a missionary journey and help close the naked. Love says visit those in the prison and don't judge them. Love, mercy, meet others' needs. Third thing he says, walk humbly before our God. Why, why does God even have to tell us that? He says, fellowship with God in a very modest way. Not with arrogance. Yes, Jesus, Jesus paid the price over 2,000 years ago. Yeah, Jesus died on Calvary. And when he died on Calvary, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. And that means that God rent it. No other man could rent it. And now we can boldly be go, go before the throne of God. But he doesn't say with arrogance. This word boldly means with confidence. We can go boldly before him with confidence before him because we trust that whatever we ask God, if it's right before God, if it's in God's will, he will give it to us. So my dear, keep praying. Keep waiting on God. And don't be arrogant about your Christianity. There, there are several different denominations that will tell you early in the morning. They'll tell you we're the only true denomination. Well, first of all, I know that's not right because you are a denomination. <laughs> and, and God doesn't make denominations. Just because you are the church of Christ doesn't mean that you are God's church in Christ. Just because you are the Baptist or the Methodist or Seventh-day Adventist doesn't mean that you are the chosen one by God. You need to understand that God wants us to walk humbly before God. And now we got a new new roster on the scene that, that called the, the, the black Israelites that they are testifying now that they're the new one on the scene. If we just show love, if we just be fair, if we just humble ourselves before God, God can bless us right where we are. You don't need a mansion for God to bless you. 
But let me share this with you too. You don't have to be poor for God to bless you. God can bless you on this side of heaven as well as he, he can on the other side of heaven. You're not going to heaven just because you were poor and broke and you're singing this song, I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. I'm not, I'm not climbing up the rough side of the mountain. The Bible teaches that we can speak to the mountain and the mountain has to skip, jump, and leap into the depths of the sea. Stop climbing the mountain. Talk to God about the mountain and watch God move the mountain. God can move a mountain. God has a way of moving the mountain. God has a way of blessing us, but we have to fellowship with him in a, in a modest way. And when we fellowship with him in a modest way, we look at him as God. And all that we have accomplished, all the smarts we have, it's because of God. It has nothing to do with us. Even our salvation has nothing to do with us. Brother Miles said one day on a Sun Hill called Calvary, there was a hostile takeover. And because of that hostile takeover, we were in the hands of the devil. Jesus, hostile. He created a hostile state takeover on our behalf. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus took a cross and marched up Calvary Hill. It was a hostile takeover. And after he died, the devil thought he had him. After he died, the grave thought he could hold him. But Jesus the Christ, he, he showed his power. He showed his love for mankind. Over 2,000 years ago, I'm telling you, my Lord and your God took a cross and he marched up Calvary's hill. He died on that hill. He died a voluntary death for you and for me. Yeah. It was a voluntary death. He didn't take his life. He laid it down. Yeah. No man arrested his life and took his life. He laid it down for all of mankind. He died on that hill that day. He died until the earth took on an epileptic fit. Uh -huh. Began to reel and walk like a drunken man. He died that day until the S-U-N refused to shine. Because the S-O-N was shining then. He died that day until the moon began to drip down with blood. He died that day until it was black. It became a midnight at midday. He died that day until one centurion soldier cried out, Surely this must be the Son of God. I'm telling you, my Lord, my God, he died that day. He died for you for your righteousness. He died for you for your unrighteousness. He died for you because you had no way to the kingdom but through him. He died. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up from the dead. He was all the way dead. He was plump dead. He was dead. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up so early until Pilate didn't get a chance to change the God. He got up so early until the women didn't get a chance to anoint his body. He got up so early until the women couldn't see his body and lay the spices in there. He got up so early until Peter and John in their foot race didn't get there in time. He got up early from the dead. He rose, I tell you, from the dead. He got up early from the dead. He did it for you and he did it for me. Our defense attorney pleaded our case out on Calvary in a graveyard in Jerusalem. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And because he got up with all power, our case is finished. Finishing arguments are over. We are declared innocent even though we know we're guilty. We are only innocent through the, the love of Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. He's grandmama's leading post. He's the horse pouring in the valley. He's the light bright and morning star. His name is Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. He's granddaddy's leading post. Yeah, he's a bridge over troubled water. His name is Jesus. That same Jesus brought a cloud and got out of here. And one of these days, he's going to catch a cloud and come back. And those who believe the story of his death, burial, and resurrection. We're going to catch that same cloud. We're going to meet him in midair, And we will forever be with the Lord. Sunday school lesson says it like this. There are 24 elders around the throne of God crying, holy, holy, holy. I'm going to join in with the 24 elders 
Around the throne of God, trying, holy, holy, holy. Sister Davis won't let me sing down here. But that's all right. When I get over there, I'm going to sing in glory land. I don't need but one tune. And that is holy, holy, holy is the man that was slain before the foundation of the world. I'm going to join in with the four beastly creatures. Over yonder, I'm going over yonder. Will you go with me? I'm headed over there where, where weeping will be no more. There will no be no more suffering, no more dying, no more arthritis, no more pain, no more suffering on the other side. I'm on my way where you go with me. I'm on my way to the other side where God is in heaven, where God is. I'm going back to my maker, the one who put me together. I got some defects down here. And because I got some defects, I need to go back to my maker. If you got a Ford, you don't take your Ford to Chevrolet to get it fixed. You take it back to the manufacturer. I'm going back to the manufacturer. Because I understand I'm living in a tent down here. But he promised me a mansion. He promised me a mansion just my style. And I'm ready to go. Whenever God's get ready. If you don't see me down here no more, don't worry about me. I'm on the other side in the presence of the Lord. Paul says it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. No more court cases. No more fighting. No more arguing. No more rent, no more mortgage, no more notes. I'm going on the other side. Where the weeping will cease some trouble. There will be no more goodbye. Only highly happy. Court is in session. God is the judge. I'm going where the judge is. I'm going to celebrate. The Savior that died for me. My recommendation to you today is to get to know him. My question to you today is are you saved? I really want to know. I really got to know. I really need to know. I have to know. Are you saved? I need to 
because we have robbed him, we are now cursed with a curse. Not just one person, not just one family, not just one community, but the whole nation is cursed with a curse. He says, try me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Father God, we thank you now for this privilege of giving. We thank you, Father God, for money. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you for jobs. We thank you for retirement. We thank you for SSI. We thank you, Father God, for disability. We thank you, Father God, for any amount of increase in income that you have granted us. We thank you, God, that you have fixed our income. And because you have fixed it, God, you are blessed. Bless every person that will come to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. You would stand on this side, come forth and bring tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. how people treated you here. I want to give you a call after this over. Make sure they treated you with a smile and you can see it through their mask. Amen. And they were generous. If the woman at the back door or the front door wasn't kind to you, please let me know uh, and we can fix that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Hallelujah. During our prayer time, we need to pray uh, Catherine Gallagher and family. In the death of her husband, these are Deborah and Alan Grimes family members. We will pray for Christy Martin. We will pray for Lydia Lee. We will lift these, these in prayer during our prayer time. Also, we want to congratulate and wish happy birthday to our oldest member of the New Beginning Church, 83 years old. Oh, our oldest member of the family, 83 years old, Sister Lori Noah. Sister Lori Noah. Her birthday is today. And how old is Sister Woods? How old? 
91 years old. We want to say congratulations, happy birthday to Sister Sister Woods for being 91 years old. Amen. Amen. We're looking forward to 100. Amen. I don't know if I can do it, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Well, next Sunday, my pastor will be here. Pastor Richard Joel Rose will be here. As you, the members of, of the New Beginning Church, uh, uh, celebrate your pastor and his wife in the appreciation. November 21st at 10.30 a.m., just one service, that morning service, we've asked Pastor Richard Rose to leave his church and let somebody else preach for that day and come here. And so uh, he will be here on next Sunday. He will be here. Also, uh, December 12th, mark your calendars for December 12th. December 12th is Welcome Back to Church Day. It is high attendance day. Welcome back to church day. You've been gone for two years now. It's time to come on home. Those of you who are listening, come on and celebrate. Welcome back to church day. It's the second Sunday in December. It's our high attendance day. Please come on back to church. Welcome you back to church is what we're doing. Um, in 2008, on the second Sunday, it was the first Sunday we came into this building. It was our first Sunday. It was our grand entrance Sunday, December, December 2nd Sunday, 2008. We came in, we marched into this building as a church family. And we had no, no other people but us as a church family. We walked in here on the second Sunday, December. And we want to collaborate. We want to celebrate, commemorate that day. We want, to, we want to invite people to come on back to the Grand Entrance, the Grand Entrance Celebration 2021. Amen. So it's our High Attendance Day, it's, it's our Family and Friends Day, it's our Welcome Back to Church Day. So please, ma'am, please, sir, tell those who you haven't seen in a year or so, or two years, to come on back. Get on the phone, use your phone to do good to welcome them, welcome them back to the church. We will still be taking temperatures, we still be wearing masks, and we want to come on back to church and watch what God is doing at the New Beginning Church. I'm going to ask Sister Davis to come to make our presentation. Sister Carolyn. church right now, they'll be in church later on, amen. 
And not only are they the church of the future, they're the church right now. Amen. We thank God. We are so proud of these girls and so many others. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here, here on today. God has truly blessed us one more time, and we are so glad about it. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of our listening audience. Thank you for, for being here, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, we believe that God is doing great things, and we, we believe that regardless of what you're going through, even in the judgment halls, God has said God. Even when men don't do the right thing, God is yet going to hold you close because he is Almighty God. Let us stand. Father God, that you continue to bless us in our going. We pray, Father God, for the Gallagher family. We pray that you heal, touch, deliver as only you can. We pray for the Grimes family, Father God. Give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to minister to their family. We pray, Father God, for Sister Lydia Lee. We ask you to heal her body. Give her strength. Bless her, Father God, that she will be about your business. And we pray, Father God, for Sister Christian Martin, Christy Martin. We ask you to bless them, Father. Heal, touch, and deliver. We call on you, for we know that you are Jero Jehovah Rosa. You're the God who heals us. You're the God who keeps us. Now, Lord, we ask you to raise up every bow down here. We ask you to encourage every person. And bless us, Father God, to act justly. Bless us to love mercy. And bless us to walk humbly before you, God. We thank you, God, for who you are, for what you do. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. God bless you and God keep you. I need to see a list of bad students. Brother Miles, Brother Nan Law, Brother Dixon, Sister Nicole Davis. I need to see a list of the students who need to be in the principal's office. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Yes, he has. And the church.